Hello, this is Matt Allington, and today I've decided to do something different. I'm going to talk about the River Murray floods that are in progress at the moment. I'm fortunate enough to be part of a family that has a family home at Big Bend on the River Murray. You can see Big Bend here, so here's Adelaide. It's about two hours drive from Adelaide and similar distance from Renmark. And over here, you can see a photo of the cliffs at Big Bend. This is one of the reasons it's such a, a beautiful place to come and visit. And so we have a family holiday place at Big Bend and chances are it may get flooded. And so what I decided to do was to take my Power BI knowledge and start to download some data and build some reports that I'm going to share in this video today. So the objective of sharing this video is twofold, to share with people who follow me at my website on how you can use Power BI to extract data and to analyze data. And then for my friends in Big Bend and other places in South Australia, they can come and get a daily update from me as I update this uh, on a regular basis. Okay, so I have a few links available here. So I'll be publishing these videos on my YouTube channel. I hope to update them every day or so around 12 noon. So if you want to see an update, you can have a look there. Um, also, the report that I'm going to be showing you is can be found here. And if you're looking for training in Power BI, you can review my training offering at this link here. So with that, let's go and have a look at the report. Okay, so here I am in the report. The report's available at xbi.com.au slash river. If you're looking at the report online, you will notice that it looks a little bit different to this, but the main section here, basically between here and here, will look the same. You will have some page numbers down the bottom of the page and you can move forward or backwards, but I've also set up these bookmarks over here and so really this report is designed for you to click through the bookmarks and have a look at what's going on. And I'm going to explain to you how this report is built so that you can understand what it can do. Now on this first page, I've got a couple of maps. So this is a map of the River Murray as it comes out of Victoria and into South Australia. There are some other relevant rivers here. So the Darling River joins up just before Lock 10. We also have the Murrumbidgee River that joins just a little bit upstream as well. And um, so that's the graphical map view and then over here we have the system view which is available online the, the link is here this system view is actually updated every day so if i click on this link you can come through and so today is the 31st of october and you can see the effectively not instantaneous but the up-to-date data of what's coming in and out of various locations so here on the 31st of october you can see that lock 10 now, lock 10 is a very important lock in this exercise because it tells us what's coming into South Australia. Um, some of the water does get diverted into Lake Victoria, but you can see here that the inflows and the outflows from Lake Victoria are the same. So that indicates that everything that goes through lock 10 is going to flow down from there. And in fact, some of the water is not flowing here, but it could be because there's a delay between what's happening at lock 10 and the flow into South Australia. And then from a Big Ben perspective, lock one is what's important because lock one is the last lock. So the lock one is at Blanchetown. It's the last lock before Big Bend. And so basically whatever flows come out of lock one are what we would expect to see go past the Big Ben location. Okay, so back to the report. I also grabbed some data from this website, the SA Daily Flows. Now there is a little bit of extra detail on here. There is some repeated data here. So as of nine o'clock on the 31st, we still don't have any data for Saturday. They don't tend to update this on the weekends. I would expect this will be updated probably later today. And importantly, if we come down here, you'll see that there's the flow into or through lock one. So we're at 63 gigalitres per day at the moment. That's up six gigalitres, 10% from a week ago. And also we have the Swan Reach level, and this is also an important measure because the Swan Reach level is approximately what we would have at Big Bend. And the other information for other people living on the river is also available on this website. Okay, so here we are back on the Power BI report, and let me take you through and show you some relevant data. So first of all, if I click on this first bookmark, the November 16 floods. Now, November 16 wasn't a particularly high flood, but it's one of the floods where we do have some data across many of these different data points. And so as I go through and show you other data here, you'll see that I don't have all of these observations. So what's important about the 2016 floods 
uh, but I do have data points for all of these locks and I want to use them. So here's the observation. And you can see that lock 15, now lock 15 is a very important lock because it is one of the measurement points where we do have data going way back to 1956, which was when the largest flood in the last 100 years has occurred. So keep your eye on lock 15. So the maximum height that we received at lock 15 was 51 metres. That occurred on the 14th of November 2016. And here is the flow that was going through that lock at the time of that peak. So keep that number in mind as well. And um, also what I've got here is that the day since upstream. So what this is saying is that lock 10 reached its peak 13 days after lock 15 reached its peak. And lock nine, two days after lock 10, lock one, 15 days after lock five. So that's what this number here is. And this is the days since the lock 10 peak. So lock 10, as I explained earlier, is an important lock because it records all the water effectively coming to South Australia, certainly at the moment, given that Lake Victoria is not taking any storage. So lock 10 is the lock that I'm going to use to monitor the water coming towards South Australia. And you can see that lock one, which is relevant to Big Bend people because it's the last lock before Big Bend, it took 27 days to peak after lock 10 peaked. And so that's why that's important. Now up here, I've got this slicer. And so what I'm able to do here is I'm able to move this little shaded area just using my mouse. It's a little bit harder on an iPad, but you can do it. And what I'm able to do then is to uh, select an area that's of a different period and actually have a look at what's going on. There is a, a problem I can see um, just up here with these calculations. It's probably because the, the maximums occurred at different points in time. But you can see as I go further across that I end up getting less and less data. And if I go back to 1956 floods, you'll see that basically didn't have any height data at all. So um, I'll expand on that as we go through. So this bookmark here will take you to the November 16 levels. I remember November 16 very clearly and it was very low down on the bank near our property, but if you're living on the river, you should have some sense of the levels in 2016. Okay, let's go over and have a look at some flow data. So this is the 1956 flood. And as I mentioned, um, the lock 15 data is the most constant data I have. And so this is looking at the flows in, it says here megalitres per day, but it's actually gigalitres per day. And so there were 300 gigalitres per day coming through lock 15 at that point in time. And you can see the peak occurred here on about the 6th of August. So that's quite interesting. Now, if I try and overlay some other data here, you'll see that I don't have the lock 10 data. I don't have these other data points available back in 1956. So, so this is the big one. This is the one that we don't want because this will cover pretty much everyone's property, certainly at Big Bend. 74 was the next um, biggest flood. Um, certainly our property was about halfway up the, the side of the wall in 74. So we don't want a 74 flood as well. This also says megalitres per day. I have to update that. It's actually gigalitres per day. So that was 200 gigalitres per day going through lock 15. And you can see the peak occurring here in October. And then 1993 was a flood that I remember. We had to go up to our property and try and take stuff off of the floor. We thought the shack was going to go under, but it actually didn't go under. So we were very fortunate. And you can see that the peak flow through lock 15 was 170 gigalitres per day. And so that's a number that I'll be keeping my eye on. Anything perhaps from 180 and above may be problematic. So we'll keep an eye on that number. Um, and then 2016, not really a big flood. Um, importantly, I do have additional data. So I have lock 10 and lock 15 data for 2016. So you can see lock 15 at 113. Interesting, we didn't get the same peaks at lock 10. And that could be, if we come back to this system map, you'll see here that lock 10 is picking up um, all the water from the Darling River and the Murrumbidgee River and all the water coming from Lock 15 as well. So not all the water went from Lock 15 down to Lock 10. So some of it 
was either taken out or maybe flooded into floodplains and then came down later, or maybe it was diverted into uh, some of the water storage. Um, and so it'll be interesting to keep an eye on the difference in the peak heights between Lock 10 and Lock 15 for this year's flood. All right, so if I now take the flood years, those flood years, 56 through to the current year, 2022, you can see the scale of the difference. And this is just for Lock 15 and just the flow. So there's the 300 peak. I also thought it was interesting that the bigger the floods, the earlier that they peaked. And um, I'm not sure whether that's gonna follow through for this year, but uh, you can see here that the 1993, this is the flood that our particular property did not go under. And then the 2016 was not really a problem. And you can see the red line here, 2022 um, coming up and rising pretty rapidly. All right, so if I move on, um, I've got this interactive chart now where we're looking at both uh, the levels and the flows. And so you can come in here and pick any period of time you like and take a look. So um, I can once again move this across. And this is actually not quite, I can't quite get across. I do have data in here from the, um, from the 31st. I think I can come here and if I click on this slicer here, like this, I think I can come down and put a filter on the year 2022. And then I should be able to select all the data right through to the latest data, which was the 31st. For some reason, it's not showing. So I will take a look at that and hopefully that will be updated. Okay, I've also got another view here so you can look at the um, a table view if you just wanna have a look at the individual data points. And then I also have a flows chart. So if we click here on the flows chart, I'm actually overlaying um, a couple of data points here. So this is lock 15 and lock one. You can see that the flows that have come down through lock 15, if I look at the max here, so uh, the maximum is 113. So this is this point back here, but I want to exclude that data point. And so I've just moved my slicer. And now we've got a maximum coming through uh, lock 15 currently is 86 and a half megalitres per day. But as you'll see in a moment when I show you this inflows to lock 10, there are other data sources that we need to take into account here. So you can overlay and have a look at any of the locks that we do have data for here. Lock five, uh, they've stopped measuring data, so that one's not overly useful. But if you have a look here, we can see what water's coming in from the Darling River. We can also see what's coming in uh, from Lock 10, Murrumbidgee, and so on. So you can take a look at those data points. All right, so this is a pretty important chart, this next one. This is the inflows to Lock 10. And if I come back to the system view for a moment, this is really important because here is Lock 10. So Lock 10, because there's no storage going into Lake Victoria, Lock 10, all that water is going to flow down into South Australia, although we don't know whether the peaks are going to be the same or the absolute flow is going to be the same as we get further down the river. So everything that goes into lock 10, if you take a look at this system map, anything that comes out of Bertundi, which is basically the Darling River, so anything that comes out of Bertundi, anything that comes out of Balranald, which is the Murrumbidgee River, and anything that comes out of Wakel Junction, all of those three data points together are going to add up to what's about to flow down to lock 10. So this next chart that I'm about to show you will allow you to add those three pieces of data together. So we'll jump back to the report and have a look at the inflows into lock 10. So here are those key data points that I mentioned. There's the Wakel flow, the Darling, the Murrumbidgee. Those three together are going to go into lock 10. So at the moment on the 31st, lock 10 is showing a maximum of 99, so that's basically the flows on the last data point, which was uh, the 31st of October. In fact, I do have this data point missing. I'll also get that corrected. So 99 is currently the daily flow in gigalitres through Lock 10, and we've got 160 upstream. You can see how quickly this is rising. And if we go back and have a look at the 74 floods, you can see that the Lock 15 flow, unfortunately I don't have Lock 10, but you can see that the lock 15 flow was around 200 gigalitres. So we know at least 
200 gigalitres came through. Unfortunately, I don't have any information on the Murrumbidgee or the Wakel flow, but I do have some Darling flow, and you can see there wasn't a lot of flow coming in from the Darling. So you have to take this Lot 15 flow from 74 with a grain of salt, but I do know that if we're getting around 200 gigalitres a day, we're going to have a problem. So back to this inflows chart. So the numbers to watch are this one here, the 160. Um, at the moment, lot 10 is maxing out at about 99. My assumption is based on following here that we're going to get pretty close. There does seem to be a regular gap, but this could be because of water drawing and also maybe filling of Lake Victoria. So it remains to be seen. If you have a look at this space down here, you can see that they're pretty closely mapping. So I would expect to see the flows at lock 10 to pretty well mirror what's coming in through Wakel uh, combined with the Murrumbidgee and the Darling. Um, also notice that a bit of a gap has occurred here. And my assumption is that there's a surge in water and it's going to take a little bit of time for that water to come down. Remember, I had um, the delays in one of these early ones. So November 16 was not a particularly big flood year, but it did give me a sense of how long it takes for water to come from lock 10 down to lock one. So it's 27 days. But at that point in time, the flow was about 113. We've got a much higher flow, so I would expect this number to be lower. So my best guess is around 20, 21 days, about three weeks from lock 10 to get through to lock one. Okay, so the last piece of information I've got is the barrage data from Goolwa. Now, um, there's about 200 and something barrages at Goolwa. I'm downloading this and updating it on a regular basis. And I'm overlaying 2016, which was the first time I had some reasonable data where we had some flood water against 2022, you can see red. Um, my observations here, I noticed that the barrages were open much earlier in the 2022 than they were in 2016. Um, obviously later in the year, they started to open up the barrages in 2016. So I think this is a good sign that the uh, water authorities have been letting the water go through. And I'm hoping that they will continue to uh, keep those open so that we minimize the holding back of water below lock one. So that's it. That's my update for day 31st of October. You can come back most days to my YouTube channel and I'll give an update um, around the middle of the day.